my feet. I'm waiting for Bruce. This must be. This ah, finally, finally, I'm taping. There, I want. Here, I want you with the car. But I'm not sure if I am taping or not. I thought you. Don't, I don't have the instructions yet. So anyway, I have to open the trunk, and I can't get to my keys. Okay, time to drop the camera, uh, Mr. Blair Witch. It's the same guy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the same guy. <laughs> anyway, leave it to Remy. So did you ever get any organic uh, wine, Rem? Yeah, we got, we got lots of organic wine. With you. Mark Geller, San Francisco Electric Vehicle Association, Plug in America, and a board member. What's your interest in electric bikes and cars and things? We're actually with them. And what are they interested in? This. This is theirs? This is theirs? No. No? Which one's theirs? We came in New York. Came in New York. Gas guzzling Buick, a big old gas guzzling Buick. But it's not that bad. You want to hear about this one? Sure. You got to get in front of the car though. <laughs> this one's going down Route 66, and we're selling rapid charges so that people with electric cars can go up and down the old mother road with an electric vehicle. That's what we're doing. It's awesome. What grade are you in? Where are you going? High school? Oh uh, yeah, I'm in high school. I'm a sophomore. I just finished my first year of college. You know anything about engineering? Anything about electricity? Not much. Not really. No. Most of what I learned in high school physics, which was like two years ago. There, you hold the camera. You shoot me while I'm taking a picture of you in front of the car. <laughs> okay. I hate burnout. Why? Remy. Because they pollute the air. Well, then cut your hair. You look like a burnout. Remy. Oh, man. The environmentalists are bleeding right now. Oh, this is disgusting. I think it's okay. It's the air is polluting. Generator again. How about another block? You want proof? You want proof that electric cars pollute? Huh. Yeah, it sucks. Things. It does. It it's smell. Why do you guys but you know what? These are fast cars. Yeah, but why do you guys do this? Because uh, it's obnoxious. America likes fast cars. We're showing them that they can have electric. You can have fast and without 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 the killing left. the planet at the same time. I sound. Kill the planet. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We all are. Yes, exactly. Why keep doing it? <laughs> I am. I'm not that pure. I, I'm pure other things. Come on, do yours first. Two feet, come on. Uh, we, we, we work out with the blocks now. I know. What? Are you going to do it again? Alright, hold on, man. Are you ready to try it again? I don't think you have a spot. Go inside. Let me go get some water. That's a big attraction. Burn rubber. Everybody just loves to burn rubber. Look at this. Oh, God. Yeah, this is silly, man. Too much traction. Yeah. Uh. I can't believe you guys are pushing them damn blocks. Uh oh. <laughs>
So what is this thing exactly? Oh, yeah. oh this is the this is the uh, battery pack for the bike. This is oh. this is this is the god. But it does <laughs> This is the god. It goes on the bike. Yes, no. it goes inside. Oh, the bike. It goes inside the bike. Yes, the bike it in swallows there. it in, just like Jonah and the whale. <laughs> You know, right? It's maw. It fits inside here. The bike is designed to fit a battery pack of this size, specifically. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, 800 uh, lithium ion cells from A123 systems. It's, uh, as I said, it's the holy grail of lithium ion batteries. Uh, these, they figured out all the safety issues. And I tried to blow these up on the bench. I tried to do it. I couldn't do it. All these do is vent. And it just, there are no toxic chemicals in them, you know? Bill, free soda away. Huh? Free soda away. Free soda away. That's just half the story. <laughs> is it? They're gorgeous, aren't they? It's half the story. It is. They they are gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's all about the battery cell. You know, like yep. they say in EVs, it's the battery, stupid. Yep. You know, I mean, you hate to say it, but that is a fact. I mean, I understand why somebody would walk away with something like this. This is, this is... This is this is unbelievable. This is state of the art off the uh, shelf, but uh, there's so is. much more coming down the pipe. I, you know, you can they worry about in most uh, uh, lithium ions. You worry about temperature. You go above 60 C or 50 C with an ordinary lithium ion battery, like you have in your camcorder there, you got a road flip. But you still have some liquid chemistry there. There, there is always going to be that. No, there doesn't. Oh, they can be polymer chemistry. You can do that. Solid state, and yep. you have no more overheating problems whatsoever. I'm happy with this right. I have this well, right now. I know now. you are. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy. This is my you know, you have to have this to get the voltage from going yes, we, we low and be charging them for the batteries and damaging <laughs> the not be These are the A123s. And they come from where? Uh, A123 systems. No, I know, but they're in New Hampshire. Uh, the cells. Yeah, these are the cells. This is the BMS system uh, that Steve came up with and I helped him build. Uh, Steve's the core. No, I want you in the shot. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're more than there. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So he did a great yeah. job on the BMS. So how many I of these trays checking. are inside the pack over there? Uh, there's uh, 20 of these trays. So total cost, if you actually wanted to buy this on the market, how much would you be spending? Uh, I think they estimated uh, about uh, $30,000. $30,000 in batteries in that Just for the motorcycle. It's 800, 800 cells, I guess. But they said that it would definitely come down if there was... Uh, mass producers? Mass producers. Always goes down. Yeah. So it's, they're expecting it's hard it to, to mass come produce down. liquid chemistry. So we have to make those solid state. This is like the Gemini Giant from Route 66. We're here. We're on Route 66, mate. Great. Look at that. T-shirt, guys. Hi. I want a T-shirt. I want a real. Yeah, we're going down Route 66. We're selling rapid chargers, so we can drive electric cars up and down Route 66. Yeah. How much is the shirt? How much? Huh? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen. Okay, you got yourself a sale. Give me an extra life. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Having a good time? Yep. Bring his class up here every year to stand here and he would
about this Victorian siding and stuff, because this is a real, uh, this is a rare, exotic rainbow siding that was used, a lot of the Victorian houses in San Francisco are done this way. In fact, in order to paint this up, we got this book called Painted Ladies, all about the, the San Francisco Victorian houses, so that we could see how they painted them and stuff like that. This weekend's very quiet and nothing's happening, which is great. Um, but like last weekend, uh, last Saturday night, we were here till three in the morning playing pool and partying and stuff. Um, but it's a private bar. And uh, this, in fact, you know, there's oceanic art. Like this is from New Guinea and whatnot. I mean, some of the art stuff in here is, is worth thousands of dollars. Other stuff is just sketch and stuff. But, uh, So we also have yesterdays here. And, um, these are more for wax members. People come here. Yes. And, uh, you know, Ken yeah, Thomas. Right there, of course, is there. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we kind of. Uh, in fact, last weekend, I mean, we had all these houses were full. Ken yeah. Thomas stayed over at our house, which is next door. So I have this whole block. I bought this house for ten thousand dollars. How many years ago was that? That was yeah, back in back kind of about nineteen ninety actually. Tell me about the Mohau in Easter Island. Okay, well, what happened was in 400 AD when the people discovered Easter Island, the original settlers discovered Easter Island around 400 AD. It was it was a lush island. It was tropical. It was very green. There was there was plenty of trees. There was plenty of vegetation. Um, there was a, a complex and complete ecosystem there. And over the next thousand years, um, the island population exceeded the island's ability to support them. A and B, they used so much of the island's resources uh, to build their Moai statues that between those two things they completely deforested the island. They cut down every single tree on the island. Um, the popular theory or the pop culture theory is that they cut down all the trees to use in scaffolding and in rollers and, and other lumber that they needed to build their Moai and that's partly true but they also used the wood for canoes and for homes and for firewood. But what happened was eventually the um, the soil there wasn't able to um, uh, when you cut down a certain number of trees um, the the soil the trees help stabilize the soil so after a certain number of the trees are gone the soil becomes unstable and the rains wash the soil away which makes it impossible to grow new trees and new crops and then what happens is that rats and birds have access to the seeds so the rats and birds started eating any seeds and it becomes a vicious circle where the the, the trees were able to perpetuate themselves until a, a, a critical point was reached where so many of them had been cut down that the soil began to erode, that the birds and rats were able to take over, and that the trees weren't growing back fast enough to support the needs of the people. So the entire ecosystem there collapsed, and the entire population of the island um, devolved into cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're looking forward to here in America. <laughs>
Why, why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question, Rem. That's the question. Why? Why indeed are we here? No, I mean, this is like a 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. Why are we here? Just outside of the city limits of St. Louis, yeah. uh, our car broke down. Uh, on a, on, where on, were we going? We were going to go to the Chain of Rocks Bridge, which is uh, part of Route 66. And uh, we got sidetracked here. So we're waiting for a cab so they can take us back to your house. That's right. And we'll see that bridge, I guess, in... We'll cross next, that next time. Yes, we'll, we'll cross, cross that, bridge that bridge when we get, get to there. it. <laughs> no, but tell me, what were you saying about where were you going? What were you doing? Uh, well, I was going to tell you about what's happening in my life and okay. my career right now. Actually, I just got back from Los Angeles where I finished the uh, Timothy Leary reanimation event. <laughs> was they find his head on ice? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. What happened was I, I migrated a lot of uh, footage that I had of Leary onto uh, DVDs into a digital format. And we went to Cal State, and they had a, like a widescreen setup there. And uh, they wanted me to come there anyway to do my talk on parapolitics, which is the name of my next book that Adventures Unlimited Press is doing. Uh, so I said I will do that lecture for them if they give me the facilities to do this Timothy Leary reanimation thing. And it really went over well. You know, this is like the 10th anniversary of Leary's death. It's and been 10 years. It's been 10 years. And now That's he's really outside looking in. <laughs> And that's what I said, and I, I, you know, 10 years and nobody's doing anything, so I got to do it. I did it really out of personal loyalty more than anything else. There was no charge for that event or anything like that. So, uh, and, it, and it went over well, and it maybe I might even do it a few more times. But mostly I'm out promoting this book that'll be out in a month called Parapolitics. And I was telling you, like next year, the my book, which is supposedly now called Conspiracy Files, will be published by Reader's Digest, which means point of purchase sales at the supermarkets. So uh, that'll be my attempt at mainstreaming that's where, myself. That's where we need to have hell on earth, is that the supermarket <laughs> checkout stand? <laughs> Actually, we already have it there. <laughs> What's under the grass? William S. Burroughs. William S. Burroughs is under the grass. William Burroughs' bones, basically. And at one time, the area, this is a family plot, and at one time, the area that he was buried under had greener grass than the rest of the place. So this is Burroughs. Yeah. And his grandfather, of course, invented the adding machine. And this is the uh, obelisk that is dedicated to him. This is a family plot. Well, why did he want to get such a big spike? Well, they were a wealthy St. Louis family. Oh, so what does the spike emphasize? Why do you have a Nobelis? I don't have a clue. Why did they have a big... Yeah, why did they have a big, big adding, thing? Big adding machine here. They should have a big adding machine statue or something. That's true. Yeah. But, you know, it's a giant phallus erected by his associates. <laughs> Burroughs is buried underneath a giant erected phallus. <laughs> and what does it say here? Elected. Erected. Oh, erected. It's a giant erection. Oh, erected it's by his associate as a tribute palace. to his genius. Oh, now I get it. Yeah. It's a but again, this is his grandfather who invented the adding machine. Burroughs, the novelist. And the oh, this is lunch. Grandpa. Yes. Oh, who this invented is... the adding but, but Burroughs, the novelist, is here. It's a family plot. But, oh, so there's, he's got an unmagged grave. This is more or less his family plot. So yeah, you, you know he's in there, but he doesn't have a tombstone. No, he doesn't specifically have a tombstone himself. He's right. So he's under the grass. He's under the grass. And I used to live right down the street. He, he, he was my neighbor after he died. Well, he was, of grass. course, in the end, he lived in Lawrence, Kansas. You know, but his family was from St. Louis, and they buried him here instead of there. You know, his family wasn't really all that proud of his accomplishments, even though he was like the greatest writer of the last century. They were kind of embarrassed by all the... Uh, but <laughs> the is it, drugs and the sex. Yeah, the, I mean, you know, his accomplishment was that he, yeah. probably, he lived to be a junkie at 90-something years old, that's right? Exactly. Yeah, right. that's exactly. an accomplishment. That's an accomplishment. And yeah. So, so he was kind of buried here secretly. Ah. You know, people didn't really even know that, this, that it was here, that he was at. Well, it's quiet and peaceful. And Bellefontaine Cemetery, St. Louis. It's May 27, 2006. Okay. I don't know, 
the road. I guess I don't know, two legs. Yeah, that's the arch. That's downtown. Downtown St. Louis. And this river is called? Mississippi. This is the Mississippi. pump on the bridge. Is this for real or did they just put this as a tourist attraction? Oh man. Route 66 I think feels like so exploited by now. I mean look at these signs. They're like melted on the chair, like posing. <laughs> the grand commercialization of the American dream, Route 66. Why not? Well, yeah, come here, hold this. I want to be like smooching on the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's taping, just like, okay. look inside. And Chain of Rocks Bridge in St. Louis, Missouri, May 27, 2006. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, you got an electrifying time scare package. by decades, from the 1920s, the inception of the road, through the 1970s, the end of the road. And of course, our museum just really shows a piece of pure Americana. Um, we have approximately 35,000 visitors a year from all over the world. Um, probably our largest amount of visitation comes from Germany, uh, with uh, Italy second behind. Uh, it's just amazing. Many people love to visit our museum. It's like going back down the Ring Lane. We get many, many uh, busters each year from all over the world. How many different nationalities? Oh, probably at least 20 different nationalities. So you got German, Chinese, Yeah, German, Japanese. Chinese, Japanese, uh, a lot of visitors from France. And do they rent a car when they do this? For the they do, part? absolutely. They fly into Chicago, Illinois. They rent cars or they come on bus tours uh, or different tours. Sometimes we have uh, Trek America tours that come through with people from all of the countries. So how great would it be if you could actually rent an electric car in Chicago and do the whole route? And connect Let's car. say that would be very economical and a lot of fun and something, a very new venture along Route 66. A lot less money in gas, that's for sure. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And anything that's going to save people gas going down the route means more tourists. means a lot to people today. Absolutely. Yeah, right now I'm uh -huh. doing this, it's going to cost me about $600 worth of gas just to do the route practically. That's amazing. That's really amazing. It's three times what it Possibly was like five years ago. Possibly will be the car ago. of the future, right? 
What's the card of the future now? <laughs> <laughs> the whole cost of the program, the charges are only $10,000 and they charge an electric car in 20 minutes, not six hours, because it's all computerized. That is stuff. amazing. So the whole cost, to just have one every 50 miles, actually an electric car today can go 100, 150 miles on one charge, but just to be safe, every 50 miles, at all like the really cool roadside attractions, uh -huh. would be about $300,000. How interesting. And for that, we could start a transportation revolution. Yes, well, Route 66, the most famous highway yeah. in America. Exactly. Absolutely. The electric highway. Yeah. <laughs> I work for a state agency, so I can't promote. Route 66 was a two lane highway. Snowstorms, miles and miles of desert. You couldn't go, it was a real danger. The torches cursed. There was hope, hair, dirt, mountains just scared to death. What brings you here? I lost a bet, so I had to move to Texas for three months. No, but what brings you to the Cadillac Ranch? Oh, just a place to see. You mean you come here often? <laughs> no, this is the second time I've been here since I've lived out here. I'm only in Texas for a few months. Okay. So you live in Amarillo? For now, tomorrow I move back to Philadelphia and drive back east. Yeah. This is, how long has it been up here? Do you know the history at all? Um, on this land here, this guy is like a multi-millionaire. A lot of helium is produced out here. Oh, helium. And this was guy... It, was there, they have helium wells? I'm not quite sure, but I read something. 95% of like the commercial use of helium comes from Amarillo. And is the there guy... a nuclear power plant in Amarillo? Because helium is also produced by nuclear power. Plants. I have no clue. Hmm, that's worth looking into. There you go. But um, the guy owns all this land, and he doesn't like produce. He doesn't like cultivate or anything like that. Oh, which, so it's fallow. Which a makes wallow. a lot of, Is it fallow or wallow? I have no clue. Okay. But it makes a lot of like the farmers mad because the guy just leaves it like this. But he's real eccentric. And he just puts up these cars. It starts from the 30s to the late 60s. The Has Cadillacs. he been adding some? No, they just stay like this. Like and he just invites people to come up and. You know, Basically, spray his car. But it is a monster t t statement. It's the very Andy Warhol thing to do. It is. And like he's real eccentric in the community. He does a lot of... If you drive around, there's a lot of weird signs just posted. Mm -hmm. Like stop signs kind of things. But he just puts oh, wow. weird stuff. I should sign him my stuff. Yeah. yeah but uh, he charges... <laughs> uh, like um, he'll pay you $500 if you put one of his signs in like your front yard or something like that. He'll pay you to put a sign in, in your yard? Because he was putting them in different places and the city shut them down. So oh. he went around and he asked people. He I'll put a them. sign in my yard. Yeah. Will you go all the way out to Connecticut? You should find out. I forget. I don't know what his name is. But he's got some real eccentric cars and stuff like that. I'm drives. sure it's in the map that I bought for you. Thanks. What's your name? Kyle. Hi, Kyle. My name is Remy. Thanks nice for being here.
So what do you think? Sounds interesting, you know, but uh, it's getting the funding that's always the big thing. Ah, uh, yes. You know, Coming up with the dollars. Yeah, because, uh, but they've been spending money on Route 66. That sign out there is proof of it. How much did that cost? Ah, uh, that would be in a ballpark of about $10,000. That's how much the charger costs, $10,000. So, How come there's a big T? Is, is there my imagination? Or is there a big T on top of the mountain? Big T? Yeah. On the mountain? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> is that, that because uh, the name T of the town? T stands for Carry. But what is it carved out of? Did they well, put no, rocks no, there? Or they painted? As a matter of fact, if you would have come by yesterday, you would have heard uh, vehicles blaring their horns and truck loads of kids racing up there because once a year, the high school graduating class takes whitewash and buckets and mops and goes up there and repaints the tea. It's a tradition that's been oh, so handed down for generations. It's a brand new coat. Brand new coat. Sometimes they put more of the whitewash on themselves than on the tea. But oh, it's a big party, hey? Yeah, big party. And who's this guy? He just he's the, waits on the customers when I'm in the back. Possible ground. That's almost like a brick. Is that something that was molded into this ship? Or? No, it's a natural rock that was burned. See some battery on this end of the rock here, where it was used as a hammer stand. So, how long ago was all this, do you think? It was collagen. <laughs> Good question. We, uh, we haven't gotten any uh, carbon samples out of this particular unit or this site, so uh, basically we have to rely on relative dating techniques, like we find an arrowhead that's from a noon time period. Do you have an arrowhead there? No. We have collected arrowheads, but not from this site. And what's the big, big rock? This is a tested cobble, I think. So... Good morning, darling. Good morning, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so they used, they like tested this to see if it was 
um, usable material for tools. So was it something that they used to pound on? Yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. They chipped pieces off. It's really heavy. Probably 20 pounds. There is a tip of a possible point here. Plus Ben took it. Did Ben take it yesterday? This, this particular area represents several uh, really expensive lots, and they can't begin to develop them until we've done with the archaeology. So that's been the emphasis. Oh, but once you guys have gotten more or less what you wanted out of there, then there's no problems in developing anymore. It's not going to stand in the way. Well, yeah, more or less. I mean, it's kind of it's a legal process that has to go through. So the, this is being done under a, a 404 permit for the Army Corps of Engineers, and so when we're done with each site, we then have to submit a document to the Army Corps of Engineers and then they review it. And technically they can decide, oh, we don't think you did enough, do more. But, you know, the goal is to make sure that doesn't happen so that they can proceed with what they want to do. And that would probably be the case here. There's not been a whole lot of very significant material found at this site. With the exception of uh, Boy, Greg and Kate have been working over there. Yeah, they had to cause trouble, right? Yeah, well, potentially, you know, it, they got something deeply buried, and uh, if they get down to it and it turns out to be cultural, then uh, it could be significant. There's some bone that was found in a trench. It looks like it's in a big pit. You know, yeah. <laughs> the George Pataki Riverfront Development. That's correct. Yeah. That is funny. Well, when I show this, the Folks back at home, they're not gonna believe it. Pataki did this, guys. <laughs> oh, you told me that also the governor of the state himself is also an investor in this venture. Yeah, there's a, a lot of players. And well, supposedly. once it opens, it actually is gonna double the population count of the county. They're doing it under the guise of economic redevelopment of a dying region, but it's actually just going to like subjugate the people that live here and turn them into. It's going to be a service economy with the haves and the have-nots. And a big Walmart. Playground. I'm sure there'll be a huge Walmart. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're all doing our part. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're looking at a couple of the bottom feeders right Absolutely. here. Yeah, 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 we're not really reaping the benefits here. It's a job. That's funny. So let's give the bunny a name. What are we going to call the bunny? How about Pataki? It could be Pataki. <laughs> the Pataki bunny. Jebo 8. Oh. So this is a hare? Yeah. They're usually huh? really huh? skittish around us. I'm not sure what's... Yeah, well, I guess you just wanted to be in front of the camera. I suppose, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, all, we're, we're, all, we're all big hams. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the transportation center, where you are now. Well, this is uh, District 5, New Mexico DOT, District 5 transfer traffic section, or we're out of the traffic section. Uh, we handle 2,500 miles of road in northern New Mexico. Uh, part of Route 66 is within our district, all through Torrance County and some of lower Santa Fe County. And uh, we're just nice to see an alternative source of transportation be put out on the roads here in New Mexico. So you're involved with the development of alternative fuels for all uh, these routes? Not necessarily. I actually handle the installation of fossil fuel. Gas stations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the other guy. He gets the permits. Uh, I, but I handle all the utility installation through the district, so, which includes natural gas and yeah, petroleum. Well, maybe we can just add something to your color palette. Definitely. There. In fact, I'll, once you do start building the the stations or the actual docking stations, I suspect, you'll be dealing with me if uh -huh. they're put inside the highway right away. So yep, awesome. I'll be the next connection. <laughs> okay. Pretty interesting stuff, though. Well, I, my name is Mike Taylor. I am the manager of the Route 66 Corridor Preservation Program that's administered by the National Park Service. And this is Kaisa Barthuli, who is the right-hand person of the program. and. Uh, our role is to uh, help preserve the most significant and representative historic sites on Route 66. 
sites like gas stations, motels, cafes, and also the old road alignments themselves. So what Congress did back in the year 2000, 2000? 1999. 1999, is they uh, basically asked uh, the National Park Service to lead this program. And I'm going to ask Kaiza to let you know actually how we go about doing that. Kaiza. Well, what we, since the, the program actually opened in 2001 and opened its doors, and um, we provide technical assistance. Um, we try to get out on, literally out on the road once a month to at least one of the states, one of the eight states through which the route passes, um, to offer technical assistance, to have meetings, to raise awareness about the history and significance of Route 66 and the importance of preserving it. Um, and we also offer um, cost share grants on an annual basis. Well, so much of Route 66 depends on people enjoying it. And with a high price of gas, it's getting harder and harder to do that. So with this idea of electric cars, you know, it keeps the cars on the road, which yep. is part of the legacy, but it enables people to do this trip without you know, having to pay an arm and a leg to do so with the gas. Plus. You know, it's user friendly too. Yeah. And they're all going to be rentals because that's what people do. They come to Chicago, they rent a car, they do the yeah. route. Yeah, makes perfect sense. We wish you the best of luck in this. Thank you. Thank you. guy in high school want to take pictures of you like this? No. This has got to be a small town, right? Yep. Arch for it a little bit. Yes. Mm, little grin, pout, see the smile. No, look at me. Yes, that's good. So I'm trying to get the name of the store in the background. Look, look slightly forward on the car. Put your foot on the end of the... Of Yes. No, but stay the way you were. I don't mind the slip showing a little bit. That's very sweet. Yes. Look at me. Um, towards the chest, more towards me. Here, lens. Yes. No. <laughs> That's great. Now we're getting somewhere. Look, you're more natural. That's it. You got that you're it? on your 50, my dear. Oh my gosh. You want to see some of it? Yeah, I would love that. Hey, Johnny. Okay, tell me about all this. What we got here is what I call the classical gas museum, which is a tribute to our art and culture and history of gas stations in America. I think gas stations were like their cultural center in a lot of small towns. People used to hang out at the gas stations. It was, it was kind of like where a lot of people grew up is in the gas stations. Traveling west on Route 66 and other famous highways, the gas station was uh, you know, part of the trip, part of the memories of the trip. And so when you look around here, what I got around here is kind of that piece of history, piece of art, piece of culture. What about if we replace gas with electricity? Then these will be even more uh, historic and more memorable. But you know, you look at some of these pumps, they became obsolete in their time. These tall pumps here with the glass tops, they became obsolete in the 30s. And these little short electric pumps with the mechanical computers, they became obsolete. And so it's a natural history of travel, I guess, as you go through phases of uh, development. And uh, pretty soon, I mean, it wouldn't surprise anybody that gasoline 
itself would become obsolete. We'd be driving <laughs> hydrogen cars and have hydrogen filling stations. Yeah, but hydrogen filling thing. stations cost two and a half million dollars or something crazy yeah, like well, that. Well, I'm no expert on this, but all I know is that, you know, things change, things evolve. What today is we oh. take for, you know, normal is tomorrow is tomorrow's history. <laughs> oh, and I love the color. It's all coming out yellow. <laughs> So were these collected mostly along 66 or lots of different other places? Um, there's quite a few uh, artifacts here from 66, um, but I've gone, you know, in the, about five states here in the southwest kind of gathering all this stuff up. Yeah, the Pegasus. Mobile Corporation used to be where, where I lived, and then they moved. They packed up all their employees. Now those big companies, uh, like Conoco and Philips has merged, Chevron and Texaco has merged, uh, Exxon and Mobile has merged, merged. So it's like we're swinging back towards monopolies, kind of undoing the work from the standard oil. What, what are vulcanizing touch units? Uh, back when tires used to have inner tubes. Um, but how come Camel Cigarette was making those? <laughs> that is bizarre. It looks like the Camel logo, but it's not. Oh, you mean it's a, they wanted to look like the they Camel logo? They were independent brands. And, uh, but anyway, these vulcanizing patch kits work with patching inner tubes. So you don't actually pump gas. Well, people ask me about this, and uh, you know, I got 37 cent gas there. And I put in an order for a tanker load of 37 cent gas, and as soon as it arrives, I'm going to start selling gas again. Oh. How you doing? Don't worry, I'm already in. What's up? Uh, He's too underage. Check, check. 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 Check, Tell me about Array Technology. What can I tell you? Well, you have um, to tell me something. All right. Well, you know what we make. And, uh... But they don't know what you make. All right, we make... We make, um, <laughs> Electronic devices that track the sun. Okay. And the reason we make them is that the modules are more efficient. And, you know, like out here in New Mexico, it's about 40% more power out of a, a PV module. 
And there's a whole bunch of benefits, and we make them um, uh, in a lot of different sizes. You know, the systems for little water pumps, systems for homes, and systems for utilities. And uh, we uh, we've been doing it for a lot of years, and. Um, um, Make a good product that's made in the USA, um, made here in New Mexico, actually. Where are the cells made? Uh, the cells, you know, are used. Anybody sells. You know, we, you know, the, the, the uh, PV modules have become a commodity these days. It's especially these days. It's just uh, you know whatever you can get um, because there's they're in tight supply. So you know we're we're helping that shortage by using a tracker. If you you get 40% gain or so, you know, I mean, so you, you have to use one-third less modules for, for a system. How, how is Robin Williams in that? Uh, you know, I, I really can't talk about Oh, that. come on. This is what the camera wants to know. Yeah, I know. I, 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 you know, I've never met him. Okay, well, how many array did he get from you? Can you uh, say that much? You know, I actually had to sign something. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't he want to know? Well, what, this what is many years ago. I, I think he likes his privacy. You know, I, I think he doesn't want people knocking on his door, you know? Yeah, but isn't the I whole purpose of having that stuff there to basically promote it and publicize it and have other people start to do the same thing? You know, it's not, I, I, that would have been, that's what I would say, that's what you would say. And maybe that's what he says, but... Yes, but he's got you know, people you know, in the guy, the you got to cut out the middle, man. The guy probably has, like, a huge paparazzi problem, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wouldn't you think? And so, you know... How, nope. many, how many trackers in Napa? Six, seven, uh, eight? Thirty-six. Whoa! That's a lot of power. What does he do but, with it all? I didn't say they were in Napa, did I? <laughs> what does he do with all the power? Um, does he resell it to the utilities? Did he just, like, build a farm? It's just... It just goes into the grid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and actually, <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs>
You gave me what all kinds of information that is probably hard to get on the internet, gets in print. Yeah, and what do and you do? You do vlogs? Uh, well, actually, I'm a videographer. I used to be an engineer and then decided to change architecture with video. Uh -huh. It was a hard thing to do because there was all this other information to deal with, like the prophecies and the times and the cosmos. So it's been interesting and I find Sedona kind of uh, refreshing to so come what's, to. What's your web address so people can see your movies? Um, the web address is http. Yeah, well, uh, we know that part. Get okay, to, get energy vision. Energy vision. Dot blogspot. Oh, dot blogspot. Can't you get a whole domain com. name? Yeah. Oh, no, the, the reason is because I'm blogging on Blogger. I know. So that was given to me for free. Yeah, but get a, get, go, to <laughs> well, name, anyway. go to Namecheap and get okay, yourself a really here short it is. domain name. Since we're called Videosphere, yes. we used to have a Videosphere website and that disappeared. But you don't have but, Videosphere.com. It's a porn site now, maybe. They got uh, stolen? No, the thing is, the, the videos that most people see, you can see at www.youtube.com. You, how do you spell YouTube? Y-O-U-T-U-B-E. -U -U -E. Like you oh, have, YouTube. You're yeah, a yeah, tube. Yeah, yeah. You're the, you're I'm the, the tube television. Oh, you're a tube. With no, a, no, YouTube. No, there's no R. Just YouTube. Right. Dot com. Okay. And then look for Videosphere. That's V-I-D-E-O. Oh, yeah, I know how to spell right. it. I think they will too. And then, because I blog everything on the video sphere, and so you find that way. Okay. Well, thank you, and have a good trip back with You're your welcome. grandchildren. A little bit in the past, fine, but I believe in working from the present into the future. Got that? Yeah, but what's the context? <laughs> because you guys thought over it, because I wasn't taping before. Okay, Bruce, I just wanted to comment. This is uh, Dr. Elliot Maynard in Sedona, Arizona, and I just wanted to comment on uh, how excellent I thought that your Electrifying Times issue was. And I presented the article on the South African PV breakthrough to Gene Myers, who was head of the Space Island Project, which is a uh, rather incredible um, solar power from space project that could uh, actually revolutionary, revolutionize the whole course of human history. So keep up the good work and uh, and keep those breakthrough articles coming. You want to talk about articles yellow? No, that's no. Okay. I just want to talk about like fine time. Yeah, I know. We'll get we'll look Oh no, go to do it with you on. I'm, I'm very happy. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda. And go back a little bit and show me your shirt. Gustavo will be your cashier whenever you're ready, okay? It's amazingly cool. It put a tremendous amount of work into it. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know what ice cream. I don't know get it on this beautiful piece of wood. Hi. Hi, good morning. How are you? It's your store. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mirna Delgadillo, and welcome to the original Route 66 gift shop here Take in Seligman, in. Arizona. Uh, this is the original Route 66 gift shop. This used to be a barber shop and a pool hall until my father and 15 other people founded the historic Route 66 Association of Arizona, which was housed in our building. And uh, people started coming in asking where they could buy a t shirt with Route 66 on it so that's how the whole memorabilia end started here and we have a very large selection of anything you can imagine with route 66 on it we've got it <laughs> and if we don't have it they probably don't make it so come on in make yourself at home take a look around 
All the license plates you see hanging are gifts that people have given us throughout the year. Um, we have, we kind of call this also the People's Museum. People leave a little, they take a little. We have all the international and um, American patches. We have money from all over the world, just from different people who have come here to visit Route 66. Um, Pixar this year, June, doing a story called guy? Cars. Is that Bullwinkle? Bullwinkle, yes. And we got the Toys R Tots little Bullwinkle character there. So as you can see, this is more than just a store. It's kind of a store slash museum slash a little bit of What history. happened to the pool table? You can't play pool anymore. No, we can't play pool anymore unless you're willing to clean it. Then I'll shoot you a game of pool. <laughs> what, what happened here is little by little, people started bringing in gifts to my father. And they started sending back pictures they had taken while they were here on their trip. And then they'd come back and people would ask, well, where's my picture? And they'd say, hold them in a shoebox. So we decided to bring all the pictures and catalog them in what month or what year they were sent to us. So all the albums around the table are just different photos of people who've been here throughout the who's years. Who's in the picture over there? Um, that's my dad. Oh. He's the one who started the rebirth of the historic Route 66 along with 18, 15 other people. So Seligman is known as the birthplace of historic Route 66. And that's the reason why. This is kind of like his little trophy trophy display. He received the Steinbeck Award in the year 2000 for all his efforts for Route 66 preservation. He received, received the Arizona Culture Keepers Award in 2005. He received the Tourism Award from the governor uh, last year for helping to bring tourism to Route 66 and to help keeping the economy alive. Um, so when he started out, you know, to make Route 66 historic, he really had no clue that the whole world would respond. And they really, really have, as you can see from all the different things, from all the different countries hanging. I love on these the little wall. Christmas lights. They're great. Yeah. Well, you got a great place here. Oh, well, thanks. We, we thanks enjoy for that it. bathing suit. <laughs> What's that? She's the gal who made the bathing suit. Uh, oh, you're welcome. You're yeah. very welcome. And where's the lady that actually printed it? Is actually, she in town? Or no, she, she doesn't live else? here. Yeah, she lives in a different part of Arizona. She lives in Cottonwood. In Cottonwood? Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. just in Cottonwood. They have an Adventures Unlimited in Cottonwood. Oh, yes. Welcome to Hackberry. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give me a tour of the place? Well, basically, just I'll just tell you a little about it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hackberry General Store was built in 1934 uh, when Route 66 was paved through this area for the first time. Hackberry started out as a little gold mining town in the 1800s, but uh, didn't work out too good. What so were they mining? Gold and silver, and. Uh, it became the third largest cattle stockyard in the state of Arizona. All the cattle were herded into here, as far as from Phoenix, Flagstaff, and Eagles, California. And then they were loaded on the trains and hauled out. So it was a big cattle stockyard here. And then that kind of played out when the old steam trains left because they didn't need the water anymore. And Hackberry General Store closed down in 1978 when I-40 opened up and sat empty for many years. Uh, we bought it in 98 and reopened it as a general store souvenir shop. And that's about it. <laughs> stuff in here is stuff that I've collected over about 35 years. We've got old gas station stuff, uh, all kind of memorabilia. There's a jukebox back over there that came out of the Oakland Motel. Uh, a lot of signed autographs from movie stars, rock and roll singers that I've met over my life. A little souvenir hobby shop, something to keep us busy and keep us going. We've had a lot of people come down here and take uh, pictures. It, it, basically, it's a lot of a lot of fun. We've had uh, some movies, and uh, we had some country western videos. We had a couple of movies. Uh, there's in the works a big movie star coming out next month. I'm not allowed to say, not who, allowed to say who, who. Hmm. but uh, it's supposed to be a, a big shoot. 
two real popular top ten movie stars, male and female. Is it going to be for a film? Or is it going to be it's for their, a video? It's there. Basically, the scouts were out here. We haven't heard for sure yet. They wanted the open country out through here and stuff like that. But uh, we're looking forward to seeing if it all pans out. Listen, if we get one of these rapid charges here, we'll have like a Digley Jr. and George Clooney. Anybody that drives an electric car, car in LA, they'll, they'll come be right coming through here. Through here. Yep. 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 One more thing to do. Yeah, that's right. There's always uh, it's, uh, the one movie star talk show host, uh, Jay Leno, came through one year on motorcycles. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of the Route 66 guys do the motorcycles. He's got thing. a lot of cars. Yeah. yeah. He just bought an electric car. Oh, He's got a right? couple. He's got a really old one that's like 100 years old. One oh, of the is first that ones. right? Yeah, we get a lot of the different clubs. A lot of the Corvette clubs come out here. Sometimes the Vipers, the Prowlers, a lot of different hot rod clubs come out over the period of time. Does that one work? That one still works. That's a 57 Corvette. So it came with the shop? No, I've had that for many years. Oh, there was it? nothing came with this shop. It was oh. an empty building. When I bought it, it was basically nothing in here but rats and snakes and bugs. <laughs> You see lots of UFOs down here? They don't see too many UFOs around here. You know, they kind of stay away from Hackberry. Okay, they stay more towards Nevada. That's then. right. They like it over there where all those rich people hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want something rich to probe. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Eat the rich, right? Sure. I missed the whale in Oklahoma. It was the one thing I wanted to see, the whale, but I missed it. I think I missed it on purpose, because maybe that whale will be special next time around, because I won't have seen the whale before.
Tell me again. <laughs> you got stuff from the top. I have my camera on. We got alien marshmallow guns. Oh, marshmallow guns. Oh, That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, guns. They shoot many marshmallows. We have trebles. When we are trebles, talk and sing and bounce around. We put boy trebles and girl trebles, you know, say little things in there. We have a lot of one-of-a-kind things like we have the answers. If you want to know how aliens reproduce, we have a one-of-a-kind thing. Right on the other side of this little thing. Oh, girl, 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 how girl, aliens girl, reproduce. Where? Oh, alien pods. Yeah. Now, well, you know, at least you have, you have a lot, <laughs> lot more of a welcoming committee than the last door I walked into, where she literally kicked me out. Well, we got anything. We got six artists in here. Uh -huh. We have collectibles of all kinds of little robots, metal robots. And we got you know, you know, you know why she kicked me out? Why? The, the, the lady that owns the store around the corner from me up there. Because oh. I, I, asked her, I asked her if she had organic cotton shirts. Oh, really? And she took offense to that. Because all of her shirts are just regular cotton, but that's okay. Well, uh, and there's lots of hidden in the world. Our shirts are premium shirts, 100% cotton. Uh, they're a little bit more to the neck, if you notice. It's mm -hmm. smooth. They have that knowing ridge, uh, ring spun cotton. Incredibly comfortable. Uh, Worn years and years and years. Watch them hundreds of times, still just like new. It doesn't irritate at all. I don't know if it's. I guess it's organic. And, I'm not too smart. Now, that, that is so, so far high. No, I mean, but at least but, you got a sense of humor about it. She took a fact. I wore the shirts re myself. Yeah. Uh, they're the most comfortable shirts I've ever worn. And then and she I'm asked sure me if I drove a car and burned gasoline. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I know, but I told her it was for a good cause. So. <laughs> well, we, we have alien money. Oh, where? Where? I need oh, money. Right money, we always need money. Well, you can customize it with your own signature. You definitely keep one with you at all times. If the aliens come to abduct you, you can buy your freedom. Oh, and there's right. more. There's a secret message hidden plain sight. I mean, you don't have to give a tip after the probe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this prevents the probe. Oh, okay. oh, you know what? They're using the big probe now. The oh, XL2000. Yeah. Oh, yeah. XL2000. Do oh, you have yeah. one of those? Yeah, have one of these. Okay. Oh, well, we have it in print. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Well, we have some of the famous shorts. Tell me about the shorts. 100% cotton, possibly organic. I gotta look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> 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 we have several uh, uh, ladies' uh, uh, tops. Uh, what do you call these? Uh, tank tops. Tank tops, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And we even have the same design in the men's shirts. I then met a physicist from, the, from California, actually from uh, Topeka Canyon, who used to uh, be a part of uh, it's a think tank there, red and blue or blue green or something like that. Sure. Who cares what it's called? But, but the fact is, he, he was very, very interested in the scientific end as well. We, we stayed away from anyone who was going to have gray aliens and you know, we, we were really looking to substantiate it as just there. And Well, this is the plastic alien Bob Guccione at Penthouse Magazine thought were real photographs and put in his magazine. Suckers born every minute. Yeah, Frank, stuff is a little bit overwhelming. There's sort of a creepy feeling going on around here.
It's all speculative. People live in speculation. How much money do you need? I have no idea. Yeah, you know what guys? I, I don't like Roswell. It, it's got a creepy feeling. And this lady kicked me out of her store because I asked her if she had any organic cotton shirts. So I'm not coming back here again. Maybe they're nicer at the coffee shop. But this is a great place. I missed a lot for me, it all happened. Where is the actual museum? Okay, there's another one on the third floor. There's, there's 70. Hey, Dr. Sadaway, here's your car. Hi. Hello. Tell me a little bit about the museum. It's beautiful. It is gorgeous. <laughs> it's on the third floor. Third floor, the cars are in here from people that own them. Mm -hmm. We don't own but four of them. And uh, that's about it. What's your name? Steve. Steve. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for the Route 66 magazine editorial office. Can you help me? Here? Yeah, they're in Laughlin. Oh, no, I don't Paul know. Taylor? No idea. How about the phone book? You got a phone book? Nope. Not sure. How about information? <laughs> Route 66 what? That's what it's called. Route 66 magazine. In here? In Laughlin, Nevada. started this project uh, a few years ago he bought a piece of property and then realized that he was surrounded by property that was owned by Don Laughlin and some other uh, people here and uh, realized that he had this whole concept for a whole new community type of style living with sustainability uh, a light footprint upon the earth and uh, bought all the property he got uh, David uh, Don Laughlin to sell his property we now own over 12,000 acres, and uh, we are going to be putting up three community centers that are going to focus on quality of life and sustainability. That's all with all the power lines, my goodness. Well, the power lines are here because of the, they were here before we were. Yeah, but it's like you're surrounded by power lines. Yes, we are, because we're one of the main adjuncts for power going to and from the, the dam. Oh, from the dam. Yeah. So, uh, so have you noticed when you stand on the power lines, it crackles? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you take a neon tube and you stand underneath the power line, it will actually light up. Did you yes. know that? Yes, it will. Yeah. I know. What Hi, is your Kathleen. name? Hello. Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> He's, he's what do you think griping. of the picture? He's griping and talking nice. Yeah. I used to date a girl who looked just like that once. You'd throw the cups on her any day, right? It was a dream. Yeah. He's an outlaw. He's not a sheriff. <laughs> oh, no badge. No. I shoot the stinking sheriff. <laughs> we, we don't handle sheriffs. He shot the sheriff and the deputy. <laughs> Both with the same bullet. Nuclear power plant? Yeah. I don't know what the name of it is. That is San Onofre. San Onofre. San Onofre. San Onofre.
How did you get involved in 66? Why? Why Why 66? Well, one of those oldest road in the world. Okay. They had a little bit in Pasadena and then they put a, what you call road in Germany and then back to United States. And Route 66 is about 26 or 4 miles long. Mm -hmm. From Santa Monica to all the way to St. Louis. It goes through 8 states. No, I'm the founder of uh, Route 66 Museum in Barstow. Hi, I'm Jim Conkle. I'm the founder and the CEO of the Route 66 Preservation Foundation. Uh, here with Remy today in Barstow, uh, right here on Route 66, and uh, uh, we're uh, very interested in uh, what Remy's doing uh, with the uh, uh, alternative source of power to, you know, to tour and see Route 66. So. Um, we're uh, learning more about it each day. Uh, we're very uh, impressed uh, with what Remy's doing. Tell us about the movie. The movie Cars? Yeah. Well, uh, Disney Pixar. Um, uh, do you have the book there with you? I do. Show me the cover. Show you the book. Show you the book. The Pixar Disney movie Cars, uh, it debuts June 9th. Uh, this happens to be the book that uh, my good friends Michael and Suzanne Wallace uh, wrote called The Art of Cars. And this basically takes you through showing you how the, the movie was made and they did the storyboards. Um, Michael Wallace, who is my partner and involved with Route 66, in fact, as most of us refer to him as Mr. Route 66, here are some of the cars that, uh, and vehicles that are in the movie. And Michael is the voice of the 49 Mercury, that's the sheriff right here. Oh, oh well, look, there's a VW van, all painted psychedelic. And there's a little electric vehicle. Where's the electric You got vehicle? that? Got there, there's, there's a little forklift. This guy's got batteries in his belly. Yep. Yep. We hold events to get people involved. There's four things we, we're involved in. The preservation, restoration, promotion, and enjoyment of all things Route 66. Can you talk about the movie, or is it too premature? The upcoming movie? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're working on a movie uh, based on the TV show Route 66. It's an interesting fact that there were 116 episodes of that show done in black and white, and only four episodes were filmed on Route 66 outside of Chicago. The rest of them were filmed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Port Angeles, Washington, um, uh, Bangor, Maine. They were, they were not about Route 66, they were about the freedom of America and two guys traveling around. This movie will take place on Route 66. It'll actually start in Chicago and work its way out and end in California uh, at the Rendezvous. Uh, production on this movie hasn't started yet, but what we're trying to do is incorporate all the facets of the past and the present and the future, and so we will have uh, a part of it will be uh, involving it? Remy. Yeah, thank you. Is Tom in? Here's the charge port, just in mock-up, but uh, it's starting to look like an EV all of a sudden. So this is going to be the first of the XBs? Yes. Well, just like mine. Just like yours. And we're going to make 100 of these? At least. Okay. Zero to 60 in how many again? Uh, under seven seconds. That's pretty good. But this one is... The T0 is 3.6. Can we get to 3.6 here? Not likely. 
Why not? You can strip it's their boat. It's drive. It doesn't have as many batteries. It's a lot heavier. It carries four people. It's twice as tall, twice as comfortable. Are you still shooting at about 100 mile range? Yeah. And this? Yeah. It'll be 150. 150, yeah. So we're going to have you do rental stations that's along? A, that's a solid 150. That's not a barely eke it out yeah. 150. Yeah. That's, you can do it every day, every time you drive the car. Well, how many T-Zeros were there, actually? There's one, three, two, three, three, three. This is the first one, and uh, two others are on the road up in Northern California. Do you still own all three? No, the other two are privately owned. 18650 battery cell. 18 millimeters in diameter, 65 millimeters long. Two amp hours, two to two point six amp hours, two point seven volts. And where are you in China, Shanghai? All over the place, China, Korea, Japan. Each laptop has ten or twelve of these in it. So every airplane ride you take, everybody and with a laptop. Has and how much will the XP have? How many? XP will have fifty three hundred. Fifty three hundred. Yes. In series. In series. Parallel series combination. Fifty three in parallel, a hundred in series. What happens if like a few of them fail like Christmas lights? How does that work? Um, your capacity of the pack is diminished by a fractional percent. So the current will still flow through even yeah. when one fails, it just right. bypasses it, right. jumps over it? Yep. So, uh, you know, we've been, we've been running the T0 that has 6,800 of these in it since 2003. And all packs are still good shape. A little bit of deterioration as you'd expect, but uh, still going strong. This is a hookup, an electrical hookup for an RV park, and what it's got is a 240 volt, uh, 208 volt, uh, 1450 receptacle and a standard 110 receptacle. They both have uh, ground fault circuit interrupters, and uh, they work great for charging EVs, and you can buy them real cheap in an electric supply house. So when we're on the road, we go to RV parks and plug into one of these and charge our car. Now, if we put these elsewhere, not just in RV parks, but in stores or restaurants, wherever, they're really cheap. You just wire them up like any standard outlet and uh, call it an RV outlet. The, and folks, plug from, an EV into the it. folks from the Electric Auto Association are writing a white paper to attach to my website as an alternate option to the rapid chargers, right. which are more costly. Right. But this will also take about four to six hours to charge your car. Well, see, our, our cars have uh, up to a 20 kilowatt charger built in. So typically these can put out about 12 kilowatts, and that will give you a charge in anywhere from one to three hours, depending really? on how big your battery is. Yeah. Because of what's already in existence inside your vehicle. Right, right. Oh. And your vehicles also run one to one to yeah, you can plug, 110's a slow charge, but uh, you know, it's better than nothing. And, and the, the, a good RV park will have 240 volts and 50 amps, which is 12 kilowatts. So how much will a setup like that cost? Um, I think the hardware is maybe only two or three hundred bucks. You know, it's, it's all... Uh, how much weight in your vehicle does that transformer none, in, in excess none. to... The charger doesn't cost any weight at all because it's part of the drive system. It's, it uses the same hardware exactly, the same actual parts as our drive system. So when you're driving, it's a drive system. When you're plugged in, it's a charger, but it's the same hardware. This is the uh, power unit out of the uh, Scion. Still missing the motor, but all the other goodies you hear, air conditioning, power steering, fixed ratio gearbox, all ready to bolt into the car. Since the battery's in there, we'll be ready to go. I don't know if you guys can see it through the mesh, but there are rows and rows and rows of these reflector panels and they're all completely trashed. It looks like this whole site's been absolutely deserted. I don't know anything about it yet, so I'll read up about it online. It looks like the project's been abandoned, otherwise somebody would have been fixing all this. It's all totally trashed to hell. That's what's left of the largest solar station in the country. Another project coming to come. Oh, 
don't know if you guys can hear it, but you can hear the crackle of the electricity through the wires. What are you guys up to? Well, yeah, we spun out a cat uh, trying to improve. Cat, now we remember. Caterpillar. Okay. Yeah, we spun out a caterpillar a few years ago. Uh, the technology was originally developed at Caterpillar to, uh, to improve lead acid batteries. Actually, my dad was at Caterpillar 40 years ago. He knew there was uh, a lot to be gained from, cat, or, uh, from far, uh, lead acid batteries. And um, it's true. I mean, they, they, uh, the design of those batteries is old technology, 150 years old. Really, really no reason to change since then. Uh, so the, uh, when we came up with this technology out of my laboratory at uh, Caterpillar, uh, rather than see a technology die at Caterpillar, uh, Cat decided to try and spin this out as a separate company uh, because they make big equipment. Mining stuff, not batteries. Uh, so uh, a couple guys here, uh, Milovan and uh, Ed Williams, and I spun this uh, spun this out. What is their background? Ed is from. Uh, let's see, he was originally from uh, Mac Apple Computers. Mm -hmm. He was. Uh, uh, he had a division there. Uh, they did a lot of development since that time. He's uh, he's had a couple of other startup companies. Um, Milovan was originally from Motorola, and he also left Motorola and has had a couple successful startup companies. So this this one is uh, this one's got a lot of potential. So they joined forces on this one to see if we could turn this into a real real yeah. product. It means basically that. This is a battery that would enter the commercial mainstream with an already existing infrastructure of uh, commerciality, recyclability, etc. So it has great, you know, military applications in terms of ready. Yeah, the nice thing about it, the chemistry is well known. It's uh, and the whole infrastructure for recycling is already set up worldwide. The chemistry can't be beat as far as power goes. There's not another chemistry even comes close. It's at least a couple orders back to faster than lithium ion or nickel metal hydride. But the, the battery design over these years, just because there's no reason to change it, it's just it's just not seeing what it can. Not even close. In fact, the efficiency of a lead acid battery today is probably only around 25 percent. Nickel metal hydride is probably 95% or more. In other words, they've reached pretty close to their limit. Lithium ion is probably 85. Uh, they may have another 10, 15% at the most that they can get out of those. So, batteries. how much efficiency do you think you'll be able to get out of lead acid? Well, you sh there's no reason you shouldn't be able to get 90% uh, efficiency out of a lead acid battery. That's my goal for it. Um, we have seen ourselves um, efficiency in the active materials of over 80 percent here and we have cells running that uh, that have gotten that so uh, and you've also reduced the weight tremendously the weight's a lot less we've taken out uh, most in one product uh, most of the lead in the electrodes which is roughly half the weight of the battery uh, another the most advanced product we're working on takes all the lead out um, it's only the lead active chemistry that's left behind so we're replacing the lead electrodes uh, of material that weighs, it's got a density of about 11.3 with a graphite material with a density of about 2.3. Did you know there was a town in Georgia, I forget the name, where at the high school the kids were told that they couldn't bring their cars anymore because they were running out of parking spaces. And then one day one of the kids decided he was going to drive to school in his golf cart. And then they realized that they could put four golf cars in one parking space. Now there's 250 golf cars that come to school every day, and the town has set up special lanes for them. <laughs> it's <laughs> revolutionizing perfect. the way people live. It's a culture shift. So I'm thinking, you know, this is it. If we can get super duper little golf cars out of this, what you're doing here, and that's a miracle in progress. 
Oh, that's right. If you if you take the lead acid battery and you construct it, get kind of that kind of efficiency, you're getting out of the same box. You're getting three to four times more capacity, and the whole box is lighter weight besides. So lead acid certainly has that uh, capability, and we've seen it here. So that's what we're trying to develop. Yeah, this could literally revolutionize the current application of all lead acid batteries because the cost would not be above what lead acid is being sold today, right? Yeah, that's it right. It would be comparable. So it, this would yeah, be the next lead acid technology. Yeah, that's right. And I, you know, I, I'd hate to see uh, a lot of lead acid chemists or uh, companies go out of business too. Um, the technology is kind of set up to let these guys survive. Because, you know, one thing you don't want to do is put guys out of business and create lead waste dumps around the around the world, right? You keep them in business and they can keep their sites cleaned up. You put them out of business and we've got a bunch of super fun sites left around. Yeah, well there's going to be golf courses and neighborhood electric vehicles and there's going to be lead acid batteries for a long time to come. So if we can improve that technology and make it better and so that it can be introduced into these companies so these companies can, can retrofit and upgrade their systems. Yeah. You make it economically feasible to do all this stuff, and that changes the whole game. That's right. Campton. Future site of the all the movie of the night. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.